What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Pikmin. In the last episode, we spent quite a bit of time at the Forest of Hope and got five different uh, ship parts. And in this episode, we're going to start to explore the Forest Naval, or the Forest Navel, as my seven-year-old self would call it. It's a pretty dark, it's a pretty grim area, and it's probably my least favorite, only because I feel like it's tough due to the low visibility, which is a valid challenge, it's just not to my personal preference. Uh, so wish me luck, guys. This is going to be a pretty tough one. We're going to fight some more complex enemies. We're going to have to navigate some more difficult terrain than the Forest of Hope. And yeah, this level is certainly a challenge. So anyways, the Forest Naval. So you can just tell right off the bat from looking at the lighting of the area, the the geography, and from that music that this is going to be kind of, well, it's like, you know, underground and um, just a darker aesthetic in general. So what are we going to try and do today? There's actually quite a bit we're going to try and do. Come on, army. Okay. And it's mostly going to be centered around getting... I think like roughly 15 uh, Pikmin on here to get this first part, which is actually really nice. You can see right off the bat, there's a part really close by. And those Pikmin are able to start working on a little bridge over there that will be convenient going forward. And so what we're going to want to do is... Nope, come on guys. It's kind of get a few different processes going on. And in the meantime, while all of those are going on, we're going to want to fight some enemies that will otherwise prove a little bit problematic for our squad. So let's make sure we throw them on top of these guys. Okay, for the most part, we're doing okay. I don't think we lost any Pikmin in that in exchange, which is actually a lot better than I had anticipated. However, what in the world are you? Um, so I guess I'll take a second and pause. This is called a bread bug, so I'm not wasting time while I'm explaining. And it is annoying because what it does is it just takes whatever pellets there are um, and it tries to take them back to its little base and it's really difficult to wrestle with and land your Pikmin actually to, to land on it and get the damage in but we're actually getting quite a bit going on right now and it's drawn to the the corpses of these shearwigs or grubs or whatever they are that we just beat You'll notice that because we have a couple flower Pikmin wrestling with him, we're able to actually kind of outpower him, um, which is helpful when you're trying to, I guess, wrestle with it to not let it take something you really want. But at the moment, we're just trying to knock it out because there we go. <laughs> Thank goodness, my space float. This float is an absolute necessity for any pilot who lacks skill at swimming in space. <laughs> because Olivar spent so much time swimming in space. I love the comedy in this game. Um, normally what's interesting is this space float is inside the bread bug. So as the bread bug goes around the different areas of the map, you'll see the star moving, which is really interesting. And that was something difficult for my young self to figure out was how is this part moving around? And why is this enemy carrying it? But nevertheless, we're able to solve the mystery now and we'll have our reds do that. And while they're doing that, I'll send this guy up there for now. We're gonna go over here because we've just discovered, you've got it, a blue onion. Because we're gonna get to, well actually, I mean, I like all the Pikmin. I was gonna say my second favorite, but really I, I love all the different types of Pikmin. To our blue Pikmin, or as I like to call them, the water picks. As you can guess, each of them probably has a, an elemental affinity and that blue Pikmin are able to hang out in water, red Pikmin are able to, uh, I guess, are immune to fire, and then the yellow Pikmin, well, they don't have an elemental immunity yet. <laughs> it's a Pikmin of yet another color. Near this one's cheeks is what appears to be a set of gills. This trait suggests to me that this blue type of Pikmin can enter the water without any trouble whatsoever. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> What's really funny is it's literally like starting off in the water, so there's not a lot to find out. It's like Alamar, it's like it's already there. Oh, Alamar, I was missing my attacks there. So yeah, one of our other goals of today is going to be to try to build up our blue Pikmin numbers, 
And we're already on track to get a couple parts today, which is exactly the pace I was hoping for. Here's the automatic gear. It has thin cracks running through it. I tried to fill them with dirt. I hope it will be all right. <laughs> Olimar, so stingy on replacing parts that are absolutely necessary or are intuitively very important, but spends, you know, a ton of money on these extraordinary bolts and other luxury items that he doesn't understand how the extra, you know, money spent really converts to something useful. But I've now recovered seven out of 30 parts. If I can find just five more, I should be able to increase my ship's capabilities. All right. So again, we're trying to build our numbers. So while all this is going on, waiting for those other ones to sprout, luckily we don't need to worry about the bread bug anymore actually trying to steal the, these pellets. It's actually such a hassle when the bread bug is just running with you and you only have like a few blue Pikmin and it's taking the only pellets you have available. This blue five is actually gonna put in a lot of work. So that's pretty exciting. All right. And then once those sprout, then we'll be, you know, big numbers. Okay, you can bring that over. You can take that back. One, two, three can go on that. And we're already building up some big numbers. You can see off in the distance there's some fire we're gonna have to be wary of. And so, for the moment, I think we're gonna have the blue Pikmin take these, and after that, we should be good um, in terms of numbers for the time being. I think we can only get 30 more that we can actually sprout, because then we'll have 100 Pikmin on the field. And realistically, for our first day, 30 is kind of all we need. Anyways, the space load, an excellent swimmer like me has no need for something like this, but my motto is always be prepared. Really, it's just for emergencies. <laughs> no need to be insecure, Olimar. I've now recovered eight out of 30 parts. If I can find just four more, I should be able to increase my ship's capabilities. Okay. So let's hope they make it unnoticed, and they do. So those are called fiery blowhogs, and they're probably my least favorite. Nah, they're not my least favorite. The Wally Wog gets that title. <laughs> but I don't like fighting them. Rather, they make me nervous. They're, they're a good challenge, is another way to put it. I've made yet another Pikmin-related discovery. Unfortunately, it's going to tell me that almost every single time I do that. Okay, so here's what we're going to do now. Is we're going to send 15 of our guys up here, because you can see there's a part off in the distance there. An extra couple, just to be safe. And then we're going to put the rest of them away, because realistically, we're not actually going to be using them all that much more. Okay. Let's go check up on our red Pikmin, because we're going to have some work to do with them. You can see there's a part right over here that I was referring to, and there's another one hidden over, and there's one over there. There's This is a quite the span of a little area, and you can see all the twists and turns, and if you zoom in here, you can see these pillars for the walls. So there are plenty of walls blocking the Pikmin paths, so there's a lot to, lot to be cognizant of. But let's go check on our red Pikmin and see how they're doing with the various walls they're supposed to be breaking down. So, it looks like they're doing okay on this one over here. Oh, I thought I could go up there, but nope, not yet. Can I go up over here? Okay, there we go. <laughs> Let's grab these reds. And in the meantime, I guess we can help out the reds that are over here that have been working on this. We can um, get a couple guys going on that. Come on. Oh, I guess... Sure, you can take one back. Oh, there's one all the way over there. Good, we got him in our radius. So you'll notice, there's already a fiery blowhog firing up after these guys. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take advantage of this, um, this red army here. All right. And we're just going to go through and try to get rid of a whole bunch of these fiery blowhogs. We got a good sizable army of 62. What's difficult about that, these guys is that, yeah, that after they do their fire attack, they will just toss your Pikmin. Why does this matter? Well, they do eventually get deflowered. Um, another weird phrasing, I guess, but we can send one Pikmin to take that back in the meantime. And it looks like that other wall was just um, finished up, which is good.
So there are a couple different ways of handling this. I tend to rush it a little bit and attack them um, while I, I guess, while they're blowing their fire. They always try to kind of like get rid of the Pikmin after their fire attack, so you could preemptively try to call them back. But honestly, I find that's a little bit slow. Something that's really nice is to try to get a little sort of sub army that you can have attacking them while it's blowing the fire, and then you can just kind of alternate. So like one of them, you try to retrieve after it attacks, and then, and so forth. Come on. All right, so here's something really important. There is water over there. So you absolutely, absolutely do not want to have the Blowhog facing the other way. So we've got 60. There's one over here. This one is a little bit more difficult to take out because of that thing there. And that thing is like my worst nightmare. Come on, take it out, take it out. Okay, all right guys, we gotta evacuate. <laughs> evacuate, so this is a Wallywog and it just crushes your Pikmin. And it is so crushing to have to deal with it. All right, we've got one more fiery blowhog here. We're gonna want to face him that way and then swarm. Wow, we got quite a bit of damage in there. I'm fine with that for now, because he will be dead soon. Okay, so we've taken care of that. In the meantime, we'll have the red guys working on that. Actually, I'll take a couple that will take some of these pellets back. And then, yeah, you guys will work on that for now. That'll be helpful for accessing that later on. Okay, so we've cleared out this area for the most part. Um, we still have some things I want to do, though. So what we're going to do is... Oh, there's a red over there. I don't know why, but... Hopefully I don't forget about him <laughs> before the day is over. We have our blues over there, and you're probably wondering why I put them over there, but it'll be clear soon enough. However, just to make the process a little bit more efficient, we're going to do something else. We're going to take out some of our yellows, and we need a little bit more space, so let's pluck some of these guys so we can pull out nine total yellow Pikmin. I guess I can call these guys back, too. Um, come on. We don't have a ton of time, and I guess for what it's worth, we are ahead of schedule in that we'll still accomplish plenty today, even if we don't get everything I'd like to do done. But yeah, so let's take out six more of these guys, so we've got nine. And then we're gonna head over here, because, very importantly, there are bomb rocks over here. And bomb rocks are relatively difficult to come by in this level. So you really need to take advantage of them whenever you can. And now we've got 17 blue Pikmin that are going to take care of this. The number one Ionium Jet. Unfortunately, this puts out a slightly odor odor odoriferous exhaust, but it does propel me to escape velocity in an instant. The stench is a small price to pay for such performance. <laughs> it's an excellent trade-off, Olimar. So proud. Okay. Um, help them out. And then you guys are going to pick up some bomb rocks. I love the moo sound, it's so great. Come on. Do they all have bomb rocks? Almost. There should be one more. There we go. Okay, so for some reason, the Pikmin get really glitchy with this area, and I don't know why, but trying to pick them back up with their bombs is always such a hassle. So that was probably the red Pikmin that were taking down that dark door at the bottom corner. We'll get to them in a moment. For the time being, we are going to just focus on these yellows, and then we'll start to kind of wrap up for the day. All right, we still have one more to pick up over here. Nobody fell, okay, good. Sometimes trying to pick up the, the bomb rock guys afterwards is really weird. Okay. And now we're gonna use these bomb rocks to break down some important walls. Okay, so we've got all nine. There's that one there. Which one do we wanna take down? There are those two, but I think we're actually gonna wanna go over to the left for the time being. 
because I don't think we actually get a lot out of breaking that wall. This one might be nice, though. So, I guess... Yeah, we'll, we'll break this one for now. Alright, come on over. Okay, one, two, three. Oh, wait, no! I need the bomb ones! Come on, guys. <laughs> gotta, gotta get with the program. Alright, one, two, three. Come on back. Alright. And then we'll get started on bombing away at this one. And that will be pretty good for now, actually. Because we've brought back the Ionium Jet, we got the blue Pikmin decently numbered up. So I think what we'll do is retrieve our red Pikmin and then come on back. I mean, I guess there are a couple things we could do, but I don't know if I want to risk it, really. If this is damaged, I'll be in dire straits. I'll have to run a system check as soon as I can. I've now recovered 9 out of 30, so we just need 3 more, which is pretty cool. So the blues, um, what are we going to want to do with them? I guess we could take some of them. Yeah, we'll put these guys back though. And we'll start worrying about what's going on at the end of the day. We have a whole bunch of our reds over there, and you'll notice there's still quite a bit going on. We have, you know, a couple parts over this way. That'll probably be our next big mission. We've got one way out over there, and we have one over here. I think this is the one I'm going to want to focus on for the moment. Just kind of making it a little bit easier to access for tomorrow. But we'll take our blues with us. Luckily, I don't see any... Um, I don't see any stragglers. But there's still plenty of time for Pikmin to trip. And where there is time for Pikmin to trip, there is uh, plenty of opportunity for mistakes. So... We'll have these two guys carry back to the onion. We can have those guys. Come on. There we go. And then, I guess. I mean, might as well have them beef up their numbers a little bit. And go back to their onion. And we'll take the reds over here. You guys can start carrying back some corpses. The corpses won't stay. Unfortunately, after um, you you know take a bunch of them down, so it makes sense to try to use what you can. Like I said, unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of time, but I think we're gonna be okay. I'll I'll worry about that other part for another or another time. For the moment, we'll make sure those guys are gonna be good over there. We've got a whole bunch of um, red Pikmin that are trailing behind though, so we'll want to make sure that it probably was not super necessary to bomb that wall. That's unfortunate, but it's okay. Yeah, it probably would have been much more efficient to bomb something else. Alright, so let's put these red guys away. And the blue guys have made it back to their onion, which is great. There's some red guys carrying something over this way. On the left and on the right. I don't know if the red guys over here will make it back in time. I honestly kind of doubt it. Oh man, there are those red guys over there. Yeah, these guys aren't going to make it. So we're going to call them into our party. Don't get distracted. Four... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, they might not make it back in time. Can I use this? I can. So they're almost there. They're gonna at least be back in the onion area in time. One. Darn it, I gotta call them. Oh, and those other ones almost made it back to the onion with the carcass, with the corpse in time. So unfortunately, we're not gonna get the boost to our numbers uh, like I had hoped, but nevertheless, we still got a decent chunk of blue Pikmin, and we got three parts, which is which is solid progress. We bombed some of the walls, even if they weren't the most useful, and took down a lot of the enemies. Hopefully we didn't leave any picks behind. We did not. Nice. So, overall, I'm pretty happy with the day. Could have been better, but not the end of the world by any means. So, four days since impact. Deep in the cave, I discovered in the forest, 
I encountered blue Pikmin. These blue fellows have something resembling gills on their cheeks, and they appear to be amphibious, surviving both in water and on land. The wonders of nature never cease to stun me, even in this alien land. <laughs> Again, I love the drawings that he makes. So we only have... Um, we didn't gain too many red Pikmin there, we didn't gain any yellow Pikmin, and we only got around 30 blue Pikmin. So, like I said, I probably should have been more proactive um, to bring back the, the dead monsters or enemies throughout the day, rather than even take down that one wall. But it's not the end of the world. We'll have plenty of opportunity to build up our Pikmin numbers later on. So, that's fine. Like I said, still happy with even just getting 30 water Pikmin for now and getting three parts. But yeah, so uh, one thing that might have been surprising last episode is I do plan to have these be, you know, two in-game days per episode, unlike the very first episode, which was kind of like a brief introduction to the game, get excited. I wanted to do the Forest of Hope in, you know, two days, and then we'll see what we can do in the Forest Naval over the course of a couple days. But yeah. A little bit longer, a little more to watch than just, you know, the 12 to 13 or maybe 15 minute day that the actual in-game days last. So back to the forest naval we go. And let's plan a little bit of what about what we're going to want to do. So I think the first thing is we can um, pick these guys just because I don't want to have to worry about numbers and Pikmin seeds and everything. Now. We still have plenty of water Pikmin we can pluck over there. Unfortunately, we do have to go over there to pluck them, but it's not the end of the world. What do I want to do? I think the aim will be to get this piece over, or this part over here, and this part over here, and then build up our army. Yeah, I think that's a good... I think that's a good goal for today. Those two parts, build up our army a little bit, and then maybe get this part too, but we'll see. And then bomb some walls. So, all right. Um, so we'll draw out some more red Pikmin. Probably like, so we have like 50, I think. Yeah, I think that's a good number. And then we'll need some blues as well. I think we'll want about 20. And we'll need some more yellows. I think this will be enough. Although I'm not sure if we'll need 20. So just to be safe, I'll put a few of the reds back so we can take out some yellows. Come on, climb on up, Reds. There we go. Okay. So now we can go over this way. I think something that would be nice would be to flower up a little bit. So you guys can uh, have a little snack before we go on our mission. All right. And I think that should cover most of the most of the crew. I guess there's like one or two leaf Pikmin left. All right, come on, guys. There's still that one leaf Pikmin <laughs> that didn't do anything. That's unfortunate. All right, so we still have the Wally Wog over there, which is an absolute pain. Never want to have to deal with it. But we've got a hefty amount of Pikmin here. We've got to be careful. If any Pikmin get left behind here, they'll end up drowning. <laughs> because when you walk over this way, it's actually really funny. If a Pikmin gets left over to the right, like maybe right over here because it lags behind, and then you start to move up this way, it'll end up along this wall as you progress through here and eventually drown in this water. That happened to me in one of my, uh, I guess, like practice sessions. So the key obstacle here is fire. Um, it's probably pretty intuitive, but you don't want your Pikmin to catch on fire. So, what we're going to do is guide our Pikmin to not catch on fire. We're going to want our reds to start working on this for the time being, and our yellows too. And what we're going to want to do, because that's a pretty long bridge, we're actually going to need to go over... Oh, I have 20. Am I going to need more? I think I might actually. 
Yeah, so that's a long bridge. Come on. Alright. So yeah, we're gonna go over this way. Do I need more blues? There's a part over here, and it's in the water. So you can see that, given the water fire mechanic, we're gonna need to do a little bit of teamwork between the blue Pikmin and the red Pikmin. I found my analog computer. This computer conveys the kind of vague data that falls outside the range of ones and zeros. And actually, to be honest, it's a little bit too vague, so it isn't very helpful. <laughs> I love that description. Oh no, so we, we need 20 exactly, so I was, I was right about that. Where is this last blue? There we go. Okay, so they're gonna start carrying that back while the other guys are working on that bridge. And they're making a good amount of progress. I'm glad we flowered them up because that will do quite a bit for the progress that they make. And we wanna stop these guys, obviously, before they get to the fire. All right, so stay safe. That was a close call. <laughs> a lot closer than I'd like. And now you guys can help out. And we're almost done with this bridge. Sometimes I'll quiet down a little bit just for the sake of enjoying the music because it's that good. Alright. So now we're gonna have to do some teamwork. So I'm gonna need <laughs> blues and yellows. I'm gonna need you to split up a little bit better than that. And. Come on. Alright, well, we don't need too many blues. We just need a couple. Um, really? Start attacking that. Okay, good. Now, while they're doing that, we're gonna send some yellows up here, because we can only send yellows up here at this height. And then we'll leave the, the remainders over here. Okay, so now that we have the yellows up there, you can see all the way up there, we're still gonna need even more yellows to go on up there and take this thing down. I think that's enough. So here we have the Libra. My daughter gave this to me. It's named after her astrological sign. My sweet little girl. I wonder what she's doing right at this moment. Poor Olimar. Worried about whether or not he's ever gonna make it back. All right, guys. Come on down. Okay, so now we're gonna have to do some more coordination because you guys saw all the fire traps on the way here, right? <laughs> Only our reds are gonna be able to safely maneuver through that. So we'll send, I think like 15 or so on this to help out with that. And then the remainder we'll bring over here to take this guy back. And this is part of why it's so helpful to clear out that area of all the fiery blowhogs and other enemies. Oops. Get out of there, Olimar! We took so much damage. Oh my goodness. That is not good, nor was it the plan. So what we're going to do now is... Well, these are... Both of these parts are headed back, um, which is good. I think we're gonna stop by the place the blue onion was before, pluck those blue Pikmin, and then head back to base to change up our army makeup a little bit. Because then I think we'll want to get some bomb rocks and maybe pick up that part over there. Yeah. So in the meantime, we'll be patient while this goes over that. When you use the C stick to, you know, move the Pikmin up against the wall, it would be a shame if they accidentally started to try to help out with carrying the part, because then obviously they would be susceptible to all the fire, which is not good. All right, so the rest of you guys keep on coming with me. We good? Any stragglers? No, okay, doesn't look like it at least. So what we're gonna do is we'll pluck some of these guys. Luckily, they're flowers. Again, flowering can happen either via the nectar or just leaving them in the ground for a while, which is also really effective. And in the effort to um, increase our population numbers a little bit, we can have these guys take this back. And because they're flowers, they'll be moving lightning fast. All right. 
All right, guys. Back on over this way. So what I'm going to do is actually um, separate a little bit. We're going to grab some more bombs. So I'm going to leave nine... Uh, that's ten, I think, but it's not going to be the end of the world. <laughs> um, it'll be a little bit easier if I just do this and then walk up with Olimar. But yeah, so the next thing we're going to want to do is get some bombs. Come on. I believe in you, Olimar. And there goes that part. Libra, my daughter gave this to me. My late return must have her very worried. I've now recovered 10 out of 30 parts. If I can find just two more, I should be able to increase my ship's capabilities. All right, so yeah, like he said, we're, we're very close to increasing our capabilities. I don't think we're going to need too many red Pikmin at the moment. So I think we'll... Actually, first we're going to stop here. You guys can see what happens. I've recovered 10 out of 30 parts, etc. You can basically check up on your progress. But most importantly, I've taken the opportunity to repair my spacesuit. So we don't have to deal with that sound anymore. And we have plenty of health. Which is always good. Okay, so... We'll wait for these guys. Come on. Speed things up a little bit. <laughs> you can see the huge difference it makes when it has 40 carrying it as opposed to the 27, right? Analog computer. This strengthens the outward emotions of the dolphin's computer. While it does make the computer smart, it also makes it quick to anger. It's just like my boss. <laughs> I love it. So now we have 11, and we just need one more before we get some new abilities, which is nice. Alright, so I'm going to leave this army here for the moment, and come on over here with these guys so that we can get more bombs. Something that's really nice is the bomb rocks do respawn every day. Which is, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, <laughs> really helpful. Okay. Now you have to be really careful when dealing with the bomb rocks that after you throw them like that, you re-add them to your squad by running into them as opposed to uh, calling them with the whistle because if you call them with the whistle, they'll immediately drop their bomb rocks and it's likely going to be a Pikmin massacre in addition to a waste of bomb rocks. So, gotta be very careful. Come on, one more. All right. Um, you have everyone. Oh my goodness, I thought I almost literally just made the same mistake. The exact mistake I was talking about. Did I really forget one down there? I thought I had ten by accident. Hmm. Oh well. Alright, so let's re-add these guys to the, the party. And think about what walls we want to bomb down. I think there are these ones over on the left we're going to need to get rid of. So we'll go to that in just a minute. In the meantime, I need to add these guys to the party. Come on. Okay, we have everyone. Everyone is here. So there are these two walls, but I think the most important ones to worry about right now are over here. Right? Yeah, so I think we're going to deal with this one for the moment. You guys stay over there. Okay, I don't mind if you guys are doing that. Come on. All right. Because I think we're going to need nine bombs to break this in the first place. Oh, but I already got started on it. What are you doing in there? I wanted only the bomb ones. At the very least, like I said, we've made um, good progress. So I'm relatively comfortable with where we're at in terms of getting parts, making our way through the different walls and everything. I think that should be the last one for now. Okay. So what we're gonna do is hopefully spread them out a bit better. And we'll take our reds and the ones that don't have bomb rocks for now. And we're gonna wanna clear out some of the grubs and then we're gonna head over towards this area. We still have about half the day, which is not a ton of time, but it's something. So, come on. Come on. Keep throwing them. Keep throwing. Almost there. Okay. 
Um, I don't mind if he does that. So we'll send a yellow and a red or whatever it may be. Um, yellow, you can take that one. Yellow, you can take that one. How about a blue? All right, yeah, let's do that. Oh, there's still more? All right, take it out, guys. Actually, I mean, it's fine for now. Come on, you can do that. Okay, so those guys are taking that back. Again, we do need to work on our numbers a little bit, so I'm fine with that. And now we'll head over here. So you can see that um, we have a little bit we can do over here. The first thing I'd like to do is take the red guys. Those are going to get distracted. That is okay for now, I guess. I don't think the reds are going to reach, are they? Ah, oh, they didn't. Okay, so we'll have to use the yellows for now then. Which is unfortunate, but not the end of the world. And then once this lowers a little bit, we can throw the other ones on top of the bridge. And now we're going to take this guy, who's tripped, and we're going to work on building this bridge from the other side. Alright, so that's why we have blues and the yellows. Got to watch out for that Wallywog. Because that could spell doom for us. And that would obviously, as you might expect, not be good. And now we can get the reds to help contribute which will make a big difference. Because the reds really pack quite a bit of a punch. What is that one blue doing? Oh, that's not one blue, that's multiple blues. Come on. You guys can help out too. And then you can see there's obviously another part that we can carry back. I don't know if we'll have enough time to do it today, but we'll see. They're almost done. Alright, good job guys. So in the meantime, yeah, we've got the gravity jumper. By manipulating the forces of gravity, this key component gives me the final boost I need to make the jump to super light speed. Good thing I found it. Yes, it is a good thing you found it. So we're gonna get a whole bunch of guys on this, just because I really want this thing moving quickly, because the Wallywog will be attracted to it. And, well, the Wallywog is a very scary prospect. <laughs> it's almost sundown. Do we have any stragglers? The yellow... What are they doing? There's one red there. So we'll want to head back to base at some point. I'm a bit curious about... Oh, those are the ones with the bomb rocks, aren't? isn't it? Okay, so we'll need to take care of them. Um, because it's almost sundown, and we can... We'll bring more Pikmin over here to work on this. We'll, we'll head back for now with these guys, and we'll see if we can utilize those bomb rocks those other Pikmin are holding to at least do some damage to a barrier. Gotta make sure I'm going the right way. So I can actually find them. In the meantime, I guess... There are flowers, so... We can probably make it back in time. Or maybe not. Maybe not. Alright. So you guys come on back up here. And in the meantime, I'm going to... They'll make it back in time, so that's good. I'm going to address these guys. Come on, come on back, come on. So, we didn't get to do everything with them. Oh my goodness, at the last second they got the part back. Good job, guys, good job. So we weren't able to use all the bomb rocks we had access to, but we at least um, got to do some damage to that wall. Obviously that wasn't a stone wall. It was one of the ones that we can normally have our Pikmin break down over time. But even then, um, they are still affected by bombs. So that'll make a good amount of progress on that and save some time later on. Anyways, the Gravity Jumper. This anti-gravity device allows the dolphin to swim gracefully through the sea of stars, like a dolphin. <laughs> I've recovered 12 out of 30 parts, increasing the dolphin's capabilities. My search can now cover a wider area. Give me that little jingle. 
Oh no, that red Pikmin is totally outside the base. Look at him. Oh no, he's gonna be left behind. This is supposed to be a cheery moment where we're happy for the increased capabilities. And that Pikmin is gonna get left behind. That poor thing. I'm sorry. You're so close, too. <laughs> he must have just been... When I was moving the, uh... When I was moving my large army around or whatever, he must have gotten caught on, like, a corner or whatever. And left behind. Oh, poor thing. I feel so sad. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. Oh, what? He was close enough? He was close enough to the onion or the, the landing site that he didn't get caught. Oh my goodness, that's awesome. That's such a relief. Five days since impact. I've managed to increase the range of the dolphin. Looking from the dolphin's portal as it launches even ever higher into the sky, I see a vast wetland in the deepest parts of the forest. I shall call it the Distant Spring. I can begin my exploration of it tomorrow. For now, I must sleep. So we only lost one Pikmin today, um, which is really nice. Our numbers went up a little bit. Like I said, I really dropped the ball in terms of utilizing the, the corpses um, that we, you know, earned from our battle on the very first day with all the fiery blowhogs and everything. But it's not the end of the world. We have 12 parts, 18 parts are remaining, and we have 25 days, so we've got plenty of time. And realistically, we might be able to finish up the forest naval in the next episode. So we'll save with this. We still have a decent number of red Pikmin, we have plenty of yellow Pikmin. Our water numbers are a little bit low, but we've unlocked a new area, the Distant Spring, which is a really cool area. I, I really like it. It's very challenging, but for some reason I like moving around it a little bit more. Actually, it's not just for some reason. I like the lighting better than the forest naval. But in the next episode, we'll probably tackle the forest naval again and see if we can complete it because we have the ability to get all of the three remaining parts it just it might require some really tactical maneuvers and some really efficient commanding so i don't know 100 percent if we'll finish the forest naval in one day in the next episode um but we still have of course the impact site where there's one part left remaining that we can now get because we have the water pikmin and there are three parts remaining at the forest of hope that we can get because we have the water Pikmin. So I think we might try to get the Forest Naval parts next. Um, some of you may already know, but enemies do respawn in these places, usually after a few days. So because we already cleared out so many of the enemies, I think I'm gonna wanna take advantage of that and try to finish up the Forest Naval next time. And then we'll go back to the impact site in the Forest of Hope before finally making our way to the final area of the Distant Spring. But regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and are looking forward to the next one. But until the next episode, this is Boom Night Zero, and this mission is complete. <laughs>